All right, class, hopefully this will be the last lecture for you on the Dahmer book. Um, I just wanted to point this out because I think it's cool. If you turn the book upside down, this page on the left here uh, looks like like atomic bomb waiting to go off, like some kind of hidden explosion of darkness, which is what exactly happens in these eight pages between the two images as uh, Dahmer you know, cuts up this fish. And this is what the uh, author was talking about when he said each of them had a moment with, with Dahmer where they're like, whoa, time to back off this guy, you know. Um, and you're going to see it uh, again, he, he, you know, we're, we're down low looking up on Dahmer like we're the victim here. All right. Um, this part, again, goes towards purpose of the novel, the two, you know, two of the purposes showing that, you know, parents and adults and Teachers, guidance counselors ultimately failed Dahmer. And uh, again, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, you know, going on, rhetoric and stuff like that. But it's also uh, showing the purpose as well that this is a, you know, a tragic tale for Dahmer that, that he's trying to get across. Um, again, you know, I don't want to keep pointing out diction and stuff over and over and over again because by now, hopefully, you know, you're doing that for yourself. But we have, you know, uh, tortured by hours of ghastly sexual fantasies, you know, stuff, you know, stuff like that. Um, and again, he makes a good point here, you know, and this, you know, speaking of establishing his authority and establishing purpose on page 85, you know, he's like, you know, one of the guidance counselors like, I can't tell that he was strange or different, you know, like, really? Like, really? I mean, and, you know, in their defense, like I said, it was a 70s population explosion, but, you know, the dude's like drunk every day at school, like fall down drunk, you know. I mean, he literally falls down in the scene we've got coming up. And ironically, during a, you know, during a, um, a, uh, a uh, video on drug abuse and alcohol abuse, you know, um, which I think is, you know, that use of irony is a rhetorical device that he's drunk and no one notices while they're watching this video is, is quite awesome as well. Um, again, here's another moment where you know people start to become fearful of, of of Dahmer, and that again, the purpose of this is to kind of you know explain the author's um, <coughs> justification for keeping Dahmer at arm's length. Um, again, this goes to purpose. Uh, talking about the the parents here. You know, hadn't really noticed what was going on. Just parents didn't know that their battle, their battles, their divorce battles, is such an effect on their son. Uh, again, that's his purpose about how you know you got to watch out. You know what you do with your children. Uh, and then this next sequence, which actually happened, you know, Dahmer was in the same room with the vice president and feet away from the president of the United States, and Dahmer conned his way in with a payphone, just calling into the White House, just how you know, brilliant and genius the guy was and how it's such a waste. Uh, again, that speaks to the purpose of this novel that, you know, think about how many of our youths here in this country, or if you like the My Cousin Vinny version, youths, the youths of this country, the young people of this country, you know, how much potential they have and how, how much greatness they could achieve, you know, and, and think of how many, how much of that potential is lost due to you know, parents who don't raise children well or aren't attentive enough or, or you know, they screw them up. Um, and again, this sequence here is that juxtaposition. We're comparing the author's house, you know, to Dahmer's house and just how violent it was. Uh, and, and again, it, it, you know, the bottom of 101 speaks to purpose. Just when he needed his parents the most, they were gone. Consume with their own, you know, arguments. Now, I wanted to point out this picture here. This is an actual photograph from the yearbook. And, and what had happened, I'm sure you realize, is that um, the main characters were involved with the yearbook, and they snuck Dahmer into all these pictures, you know, as part of a prank they were pulling. And this teacher on the left finds out, and, and one of, again, a, a, another part of the purpose, one of the deplorable acts of adults that fell Dahmer was that, you know, in, instead of just, you know, letting it slide or whatever, she takes a black marker and marks Dahmer's face out of all these photos that go in the yearbook. And that's like, think about the psychological effect that, that that has on a person. But what's interesting about this photo also, you know, it establishes author credibility, but it's also really prophetic. You know, that black smudge becomes a symbol of the darkness within inside Dahmer. 
you know, the fact that he is a person that all these other people probably want to forget they ever even knew. That his darkness is something that, that's going to spread, that, that he is a nothing to so many people, like a blank face, which is really neat how sometimes life is stranger than fiction, that I actually, that, that, that photo predicts the future. Um, again, this speaks to author credibility and also the failure of adults, you know, part of the purpose is these are actual, uh, you know, actual things that were published at the school, you know, these, 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 uh, these drawings you see here are by Jerf Bagdurf, John Bagdurf. And that's an actual poster for an election. And then the one at the bottom actually went into uh, the yearbook. And, you know, you got to think in today's age, if you were a teacher and you saw, or even at this time, if you're a teacher and you saw this, this picture of Dahmer kind of, you know, looking like he's mentally challenged, you know, that was immediately something that, that, probably would be brought to the principal's attention like hey you know are you okay man are these guys making fun of you like what's our what this is not appropriate but again it's just an utter lack of all kinds of adults you know around and this next sequence as well is kind of interesting um Dahmer actually thought that he had a special ability that allowed him to escape detection to essentially be invisible because so many adults and other people had ignored him in his life. And in fact, there's two occasions, you know, that kind of prove this. You know, like at the end of this graphic novel, he actually gets pulled over with a, a dead body in the back of his car and, and garbage bags and at like 2 o'clock in the morning. And he tells the officers, you know, hey, you know, I'm just taking the trash to the dump. You know, and he's even been drinking. And, you know, I don't know, maybe that white privilege thing gets him out of it, you know, because they're like, oh, no problem, buddy. Nothing suspicious at all. Um, but maybe he was so weird and off-putting, you know, the police were like, God, just get this guy out of here. But there's another situation, too, where, again, this ability to escape detection. He had been cruising up and down the strip and picked up a young gay Latino guy and offered him money uh, to pose for uh, photography, like nude photography, as like a modeling gig. And that's how he lured a lot of young gay guys back to his house. And... Um, he had actually drugged him and then drilled a hole in his brain because he wanted to make like human, almost like dolls that were functional, but didn't have a mind of their own. So he could kind of use them however he wanted to. And uh, the guy escaped and he went and he kind of ran away from Dahmer and he was bleeding out of his head and he fell down on the street, you know, before these two cops. And then Dahmer runs up and Dahmer's sure he's busted. And, uh, you know, they, they, uh, you know, they're like, ah, you know, are you okay, man? And Dahmer convinces them, you know, that that's his boyfriend. And he's just drunk and fell down and hit his head. And immediately these cops, you know, with uh, their homophobia are like, ah, you know, get out of here. And they don't even, you know, investigate the situation any further. And then another time they had, they searched his house but didn't open the refrigerator and it was full of body parts. So something about his personality, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, again, examples of how adults fail. Um... You know, another example of purpose on 125, you know, Dahmer is extremely intoxicated at school and nobody seems to be you know, notice. And again, we have all the, you know, diction here and there that, that can be analyzed. Um, again, you know, author credibility, you know, um, you know, this, you know, again, he's... Durf Backdurf seems to kind of absolve himself of, uh, you know, guilt. And like I said, this is a catharsis for him to not feel guilty about keeping Dahmer at arm's, arm's length. Like, you know, I don't think that me and my teenage buddies, you know, that we could have, uh, you know, actually saved Dahmer. Uh, but, but look at the word choices, skin, crawled, aura of doom, you know. Um, and uh, this, again, speaks to author credibility. You know, Dahmer gets an actual date to the problem. And I feel bad for whoever that girl is, you know, I would, I would never tell anybody, I would change my name, they wouldn't even know I went to date with Dahmer, but John Backdorf and his buddies, they're such losers, you know, according to his own words, that, that they don't even get dates to the prom, and Dahmer does, um, you know, if he wasn't being honest, I don't think he would include that, I mean, you know, it seems like you would try to make yourself look better, uh, not like, hey, Dahmer got a prom date, and I didn't, um, Anyways, you know, again, 
if you look at the rhetoric here and, and think about, you know, what the author is saying, he's, again, he's trying to get that purpose across that Dahmer's life was a tragedy. I mean, the guy couldn't even make it through an entire, you know, date at the prom. He was so awkward and, and, and he was gay and, you know, and, you know, and that's what we get here. Now, I want you to also notice as far as the artwork goes that uh, we're getting more and more darkness increasingly in all the panels as, as Dahmer, you know, moves uh, more and more forward in, into to his darkness. And again, we have juxtaposition here. Uh, you know, on the left page, dialogue, word choices, narration about John Backdurf and his friends, art about them being together, and then, you know, Dahmer uh, by himself, a comparison of their friendship. Again, here, talking about purpose, you know, um, Dahmer is completely left on his loan. I mean, you know, his mom just gets his little brother and dips on him. You know, like, see ya, peace. And you got to think about the, the kind of the damage that that creates. And, and we get that here, not only artistically, but, you know, in the rhetoric of this narration and dialogue as well. You know, again, juxtaposition, the comparison between the two. Right. And even the word choices can be compared, you know, uh, for all everybody graduating high school, a highway and uh, full of hope and possibility. Whereas on Dahmer, it was a complete opposite. You know, it's a living hell. Utterly unknowable how horrible it was for him. His life ended that day. Um, and so again, juxtaposition between the two characters. And if you'll notice now, uh, we have a return from one of the first scenes of the book of Dahmer walking down the road, but now... Is completely dark, as in he has completely succumbed to the darkness. Because at this point, he's already murdered someone, and uh, you know this guy Mike dropping him off actually is has his car parked over the bodies that's stuffed under the drainage ditch. Um, you know, you've got diction again. Again, you have the symbolic. You know, artistically symbolic. We have the light. You know, symbolism. We have the light going out. And this scene, again, I think speaks to author credibility because it doesn't make John Backdorf look pretty good. I mean, it doesn't make him look good at all. He's sitting joking around about how Dahmer's probably a serial killer, and, and then he points out that they all laughed about it. I mean, that makes him look like a-holes, but, you know, it gives him author credibility because he includes it. Okay, well, there's a lot, you know, of little things to be, you know, analyzed in terms of rhetoric in this novel, you know, um, you know, symbolism, metaphors, similes, you know, like I said, punctuation to create pauses, word choice, you know, all, all that stuff besides the four main points of rhetoric, um, you know, rhetorical questions, where the hell are all the adults? Um, but I hope you enjoyed this book, and I just think it's a fun way to teach, uh, teach rhetoric. And um, anyways, uh, later, Gator.